All right, follow me on this one. What happens if you get two Saiyans in a pod? Peas! <laughs> What's up everybody, Stevdez here, and welcome back to another edition of Dragon Ball Days. It's finally time to add on to the what if that started it all on this channel. All inspired by Mr. Lawrence Simpson over on the Masako X channel. With his series about female Goku, that inspired me to continue on to this series where we ask the question, what if Vegeta was born female? In the previous parts, we explored Planet Vegeta's potentially male-dominated society and decided that a certain Prince of All Saiyans would be part of the Saiyan unit. Thanks to his mother getting him out of there, Tarbul was able to survive the devastation of his race. The young Prince of All Saiyans would stand up for himself and want to lead a mission. And what better mission than Raditz's mission to go retrieve Kakarot from the clutches of planet Eoth. The Saiyan Prince's negotiations seemed to go well for a little bit. However, Raditz opened his mouth and consequentially lost his attitudes, controls, just so he could get a special beam cannon in the back. All thanks to him yelling at Tarbol. After being abandoned by his sister, the only hope Tarbol had for survival would be to join the Z fighters and fight against Vegeta and Nappa. The great ape training with Gohan helped immensely in the battle against Vegeta. Gohan, sure, was angry, but he was able to control his actions and focus his anger on the princess of all Saiyans, as it were. Or should we say queen? The final blow that was struck was not great ape Gohan falling on Vegeta, however, it was the spirit bomb being reflected at a wounded Vegeta being held from behind by a Saiyan's worst nightmare, the full Nelson, by her own brother. With Vegeta now in space, Chaozu dead, Piccolo dead, and in turn, Kami dead, and in turn, the Dragon Ball's gone, let's continue this what if in the well-known hospital room. Krillin asks Tarbul about what he called Piccolo when he first met him. Namekian? What's that? And sure enough, Tarbul has the answers. He's done his math. He knows how maps work. Tarbul elaborates. He tells Krillin about planet Namek and how it was just one of those planets off of the star system. They're, they're not really useful for much. At least Frieza didn't think so. Krillin then considers maybe taking the Saiyan pod that they've been using for the Great Ape training to space and go find planet Namek. And that's where Popo comes in. Because Popo knows where Kami's ship is. And after Popo says it, sure enough, Goku remembers Kami talking about it. Oh yeah, Kami said something about that. Yes, Kami informed us of his ship and where we'll be able to find it so that we can go to Namek and retrieve the Dragon Balls. Bulma goes to check it out, just like in the anime, and the Z Fighters have a plan. We still get that spat between Gohan and Chi Chi, and after Gohan proves his point, he does win the argument in the end. Tian Shinhan is adamant about going to Namek in order to revive Chaozu. He wants that wish, he wants to revive his friend who gave his life for this planet. Tarbul, however, wants to go with them more because he really, really wants them to be sure that they can get to the planet and get back safely, as well as maybe a bit quicker. Bulma tells him that the ship's design is pretty simple, so maybe he can help you know, her dad work on the other ship that they're building based off of the Saiyan crafts. At this point, the Z Warriors decide who will go with who, and with 80% of the vote supporting Tarbul, Tian decides he's gonna go with Krillin, Gohan, and Bulma in the first ship. He'll be able to help hold things down until Goku and Tarbul come by. Tarbul agrees, and both Saiyans lock eyes with each other because they're excited to do a bit of training. 
Now, in terms of the damage from the last part, I want to say that Tarball's a little better off than Goku, because a lot of his damage was key-based, not necessarily physically based. This would give Tarball roughly a week, tops, in order to do a bit of training, maybe help with the ships, he would be able to do a lot. But the first thing he wants to do is really do some training with Krillin and Gohan before they have to go. Help, bring Tien along. It'll be just like training before Vegeta got there. Tien, Krillin, and Tarbul all go to Chi Chi's house in order to pick up Gohan and have some fun sparring before they have to go. Really get them prepared just in case Namek actually has warriors. I mean, if they have warriors, they're probably going to be stronger than Piccolo. However, the Prince of All Saiyans now has to confront Chi-Chi, who wants nothing more than for Gohan to study. Gohan is not doing anything until he's finished his studies! Chi-Chi, Gohan needs to train. And he will train his mind! I swear, you Saiyans and your training, day in and day out! I can't believe you'd think I would let my son- We'd be dead without Gohan, Chi-Chi! That's where the mother goes a bit silent. Clearly, this Saiyan is not going to just back off like the rest of Goku's friends. The boy stood up for you because someone died for him. He wants to do his best and make an effort to bring him back. An honorable warrior you have there, and you're just wasting his potential in front of books. I cannot bother to understand your earth customs, Chi-Chi, but Gohan is a strong warrior, just like his father. Let us help him to be the best he can be. Chi Chi then backs down and tells him that Gohan needs to be back by sundown. And Tarbo's only gonna get until they go to Namek. When he gets back to Earth, he's going to hit the books. Tarbo agrees with this and using the more diplomatic side of things, he thinks of a way to talk this through with Chi Chi. She's not a bad woman, she's a very caring mother and she wants them to know that. Krillin, Tarbul, Gohan, and Tien spend the day getting some good training, hanging out, and starting to become more friendly towards each other, and Tien is really thankful for this extra training. After they get Gohan back, Tien and Krillin head back home to get some rest for tomorrow. They might want to do a little more training, maybe visit Goku, maybe visit Master Roshi, but whatever they're doing, it's none of anyone's concern at the moment. What is of concern is the Sand Prince staying behind in order to make an attempt to talk to Chi-Chi about the Saiyan race and try to get her to understand what fighting really means to them. Chi-Chi questions why the Prince is staying behind, but the Prince looks at her and tells her straight up, You know, Chi-Chi, you do remind me of my mother. She would always encourage us to be the best we can be, and in your eyes, it's improving the intelligence of that boy. But you do need to understand, Saiyans don't just fight to fight. We don't train to just do something. It means something to us. Pride, it's something within our genes. And your son, he wants to make his dad proud, don't you understand? I understand that maybe you don't see it my way, and that's fine, but really consider that even though Gohan is human, he gets his fighting talents from his father, but he does get his brain from his mother. And that is something he will treasure for his future. I've said my piece, Chi-Chi. It's up to you now. You really do remind me of my mother. With that, Tarbal takes off, leaving Chi-Chi in thought about what fighting really does mean to Gohan, and starts to really consider it. Meanwhile, on Frieza Planet Less Than Pi, Vegeta is recovering and finally gets out of the pod. 
Unfortunately, she is kicking her own butt because she ended up losing her tail and losing the battle because of her own brother. And just like in the anime, she is confronted by Kui. However, in this timeline, because Vegeta's female, she gets all the respect from every male Frieza soldier, and every male Frieza soldier thinks she's a nice piece. She's just kind of rough around the edges. Nah, everything happens like normal. Had you going, didn't I? Still, though, Kui heads Vegeta off and confronts her about it. She's not going anywhere if Kui has anything to say about it. Sure enough, in the pod bay, Vegeta is a bit rash to get to the planet. What she hears that Frieza is already on Namek, looking for the Dragon Balls. Vegeta is not hesitating, and she's trying to get into a pod, but Kui is stopping her. Vegeta, however, is a little bit more violent when it comes down to leaving Frieza Planet 420. She glares at Kui, and then decides to taunt him into a corner. What's the matter, Kui? You're not going to let a lady leave. How shameful. I should tell Lord Frieza how pitifully you treated a woman. What would that say about the rest of the Frieza forces? That they're all just pigs. They have no dignity. Now, Vegeta, you're not gonna go anywhere. You're coming with me. And ha! Ah, that's a hand. Yeah, Vegeta rips his insides out. Just punches a hole through him. She's a lot stronger than Kui remembers, and she scares the hell out of every soldier in that pod bay. She then glares at everyone else and says, If any of you tells Frieza, I'll return this pod and deal with you myself. As a matter of fact, she ends every soldier in that pod bay and leaves before anybody can figure it out. Not only that, she does erase the data from the last few minutes so that nobody knows that Vegeta left. It'll take him a little while to figure it out. All thanks to Tarbo being in the picture, this Vegeta is a lot more cunning and a lot less patient with, you know, idiots. With that, Vegeta takes off to Namek. On Earth, the crew takes off in the Namekian spaceship just a day early thanks to Tarbo's influence. And he figures, while Kakarot's recovering, he doesn't want to train by himself. Maybe he can help Dr. Briefs with the other ship. Fake Namek doesn't happen. Moving on. Hold on to the second stem days! Oh god, what? Fake Namek took up time! You can't not have fake Namek because he took time away from the trip! And there's no reason you have to skip fake Namek just like Masako does! You're a moron! You're, a, you're not doing it right! You're not being faithful to the source material! I'm some flank video! Fine, you want a reason? Here you go. Tarbo's map data from Raditz's pod is able to navigate them extremely well. As a matter of fact, much better because they also have the map data from where the rebel bases are located. They see some strange ship. They're not gonna take it in because it's not, it's not some sort of spy satellite. Therefore, the rebel base is skipped as well. They know where Namek is and thanks to Frieza's data maps, they're able to get there without going to fake Namek and without going to the rebel base. Happy? Good. However, because of this, the Earth crew actually gets to Namek a few days early. Frieza is just starting his onslaught and has two of the seven Dragon Balls already. And after getting there, it doesn't take him long to realize that, uh, yeah, there's people wearing armor like what Vegeta and Tarble had on. This does not bode well for the Earth crew. Naturally, Bulma sets up camp, and Krillin, Gohan, and Tien decide to split up. Krillin and Gohan going to one village that's nearby, and Tien going to another village. Being dressed like a warrior actually helps Tien here, as he's respected by the other Namekian warriors, and he's willing to be listened to. Krillin and Gohan, well, they're just as lucky, and they're willing to tell them that things are not going to be okay. These two villages are saved, 
and in return, they do give the strangers their Dragon Balls. Meanwhile on Earth, Goku is informed that the ship is ready, and Tarbo's gonna like what Dr. Briefs came up with. Tarbo got to try out the gravity chamber before Goku. Not only that, but Goku is informed that people that look like Vegeta are on the planet, and Vegeta might be close behind. Tarbo's eyes widen. He knows it's the Frieza forces, and he knows that Frieza's power level is 750,000. Goku's still in bed, wrapped up like the anime like you see here, but Tarbo remembers something. He gave Tian, Krillin, and Gohan these little things that they ate when he got to the battlefield, so he questions Goku about what they are. Um, Kakarot, what were those things that you gave your son and friends when you first came? Oh yeah, good idea! Sensu Beans would do the trick just fine! <laughs> Goku then explains what Sensu Beans are, and where to find them. Tarbo naturally thinks this is very interesting. He knows about the Zenkai boost, so he's gonna get more beans than Goku bargained for. He goes to Korin's tower and talks to the cat, really getting to know him. This is where a certain spot in the Dragon Ball canon is going to be addressed. This is where Tarbo gets to drink the Ultra Divine Water. Now hold on, Step Des. The Ultra Divine Water is supposed to kill someone who's evil. And Tarbo's still kind of a bad guy. He's still a Saiyan Saiyan, so wouldn't this kill him? The Ultra Divine Water, scientifically, may just work based on someone's power level, and I think that threshold has been crossed. This makes Tarbo's mind open, and he understands why the other Z Fighters got to drink the water. He can sense power levels. This is amazing. He knows where Goku is. He knows where Roshi is. He knows where, heck, anything that has a power level over 200 is. This is amazing. He thanks Korin and then requests the beans and a few more, as he knows something about Goku that Korin doesn't. He tells Korin about the Zenkai boost, and the Zenkai boost is definitely helpful when you have full healing beans. More beans go to Namek. After giving one to Goku and Goku breaks his casts, Tarbal is astonished at this, but then tells him, we need to get a move on. Dr. Briefs briefs Tarbal about the different things that he added just to make things a little nicer for them. The weight set and a nice fridge that's fully stocked and that's where Tarbo thinks two Saiyans over the course of maybe a week? This would be a problem. He requests that twice as much food be packed because Saiyans have a big appetite and with the training they're going to be doing, they're going to need it. While it's being packed, Goku and Tarbo does a bit of light sparring, maybe just going into the air so they don't wreck anything, and then they get in the ship and take off. Goku is itching to start training, and he goes to the gravity chamber and sets it to 10, thinking, well, this is King Kai's planet. And Tarbo is interested in this, this King Kai. He does also mention that this is actually the gravity for planet Vegeta. Everybody born on Vegeta dealt with this kind of gravity. Goku thinks that's really cool, and he wants to learn more about the Saiyans as they start fighting. Every time they take a break, he'll ask a few things. Naturally, everything would be factual, all except for Goku's father being a brilliant scientist. However, Tarbal is unimpressed with this gravity, and while Goku feels it a little bit, he's not really struggling. Goku sets it to 20, and Tarbal again is still not very impressed. He's hunching over a little bit, but he got to try out the gravity chamber before Goku was ready, and he just plays it off like the proud prince he is. Come on, Kakarot, 20 times Earth's gravity? This is just twice as much planet Vegeta. How are you having this much trouble? I'm not exactly used to it! Well, considering our supplies, we're gonna need as much time as we can grab and more effective training. He sets it to 25 times and nearly renders Goku to the floor. He is really pushing himself in order to stand up, and Tarbal is 
just about as low as Goku was at 20 times Earth's normal gravity. With Tarbo, the Saiyans are going to get even more of a workout than they would in the original. And Goku has a fun sparring partner all the way to planet Namek. As the Saiyan duo takes off to Namek, Vegeta's on the planet, and the Earth crew are trying their best to stay under the radar. That's where we're going to leave this part for right now. But I don't want to leave you all with nothing, so here's a poll that I want you to answer. Does Tarbal and Vegeta reconcile? Face it, Vegeta and Tarbal's brother and sister relationship, it's really rocky, and seeing how much training Tarbal's gonna get, maybe Vegeta will turn over a new leaf. Or do you think her pride is really going to keep her away from showing Tarbo any ounce of respect? Vote in the poll above and leave a comment below with your thoughts. I'm always interested in reading comments from you guys and gals. I need to look at that statistic. For more what ifs in the realm of video gaming and Dragon Ball alike, such as if Majin Vegeta actually killed Boo in the Boo Saga, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. <laughs> Two peas in a pod, what was I thinking?